Yeah, uh, first, um, uh, I would like to say that I do believe that we cannot predict the future of music listening. With reasonable certainty, the most we can do is to speculate and try to justify those speculations as best as we can. The history of music listening has, re has repeatedly shown that major technological revolution is often the result of startling developments whose innovations go on to permanently change people's approach to music. So, given this, what can I offer today? The Austrian music sociologist Kurt Blakhoff defines the goals of music sociology research as follows. The collection of all social facts relevant to changes in music practice, the ordering of these facts according to their significance for the changes under investigation. In the past 20 years, the most important facts relevant to musical practice were related to the development of the music media, especially the internet. Blakhoff coined the term media morphosis to address the, the development of music media and its effect on musical practice. Right now we are facing the digital media morphosis and one of its consequences might be the musical self-socialization. That means that young people mainly relate to digital media in developing their musical preferences and habits. One consequence we know for sure is a serious change in the structure of the music industry. As well-established record companies like EMI collapsed, new actors became major companies of music business. Apple, for example, multiplied its income and its share value since establishing the iTunes Music Store in 2004. So, here you can see the situation in Austria. From the consumer's perspective, the major change was that we are able to listen to music without payment now. Of course, that showed in the sales figures of the recording industry. For some years, there was hope that sometimes income from legal music downloads will compensate the loss from dropping CD sales. But now, the download sales are dropping too, and industry officials pin their hopes to music streaming. And here we are uh, to answer the question why findings from Austria are of interest for the UK and other countries. You see here uh, a chart of the streaming situation worldwide. Uh, you might say a small country with around 8 million inhabitants cannot be taken to represent global trends in music practice. Let me tell you this, in fact, there is no longer any global trend as such. You can see here an overview of the role that music streaming plays in different markets. In pioneering countries such as Sweden or South Korea, the share of streaming in the digital market is extremely high, more than 90%. On the right bottom. On the other hand, Austria, but also Japan, Germany, and the UK lie far behind with a streaming share of between 18 and 30 percent. At least as regards the future market for music streaming, we can consider the similar initial situation of these four countries. And we can use the findings regarding the attitudes and behaviors of Austrians towards music to also make predictions about the second, the third, and the fourth largest global music market. So for my findings and for my research project, in 2010 we conducted the first survey on musical attitudes and behavior of the Austrian population. Every round was completed in the summer of 2015. 
More than 1,000 face-to-face interviews in each survey allow to present valid data on musical behavior in the digital medium of roses. We have representative samples of the population in Austria regarding age, gender, education, income, migration background, size of home, and ritual affiliation. In general, at Vienna's Institute for Music Sociology, we focus our research on various aspects of how people experience music so that we can most clearly and comprehensively assess Austrians' attitudes and behaviors towards music. The research findings I'm going to present here cover just a few of these. I will look at performance music and transmission music at how music is used and integrated into everyday life, at preferences, dislikes, and how often people listen to different styles of music, <coughs> at media and social influences on music listening, at new and old music media and the way these are approached, and at music consumption today and yesterday by comparing listeners' musical tastes with those of their parents. The research project takes account of a whole range of socio-structural factors, age, gender, family structure, profession, income, migration background, size of town or city, education, and number of books owned. Looked as a whole, age and education have the strongest influence on different music receptions. In my presentation today, I'm going to focus just on differences related to age. So one of the main results of the first research run in 2010 was that those who have grown up with the internet show considerably different approaches and listening habits compared to the audiences of the analog era. As Eva told before, we named this uh, Digital Natives or Generation Web, Web 2.0. At the same time, many people's musical, beha music, musical behavior might be hardly influenced by digitalization. So the next question was, how strong in fact are the effects of mass media and peer group in establishing new ways of receiving music? So if you look at the Greek water, these are the rural domestics in Austria. These are the people who hardly take notice of the digitalization. They keep on their listening habits like they did 10 years, 20 years before. They are opposite to the orange ones, the uh, generation web 2.0. In order to analyze this matter in detail, we consulted in the second study, 2015, more Austrians aged under 26 and weighted the sample. We are assuming that young people's current behavior may become the normal music practice in the future. Of course, we can say for sure whether young people will in fact maintain their particular behavior later in life. For example, we know that a love of classical music is to a certain extent affected by age. So, finally for the findings, the graphs show results for digital natives in orange color compared to that aged 26 or older in blue color. As regards music listening and other leisure time activities, the clearest differences between young and older ones are not actually in music listening. Rather, they are in going to the cinema and playing with friends. Variables here on the chart written in capital letters indicate particularly strong relationships as for being with friends. And that indicates strong relationships. 
Age group differences in listening to music in the background are not significant, as well as differences in concert going. That's why they are shown here in light colors. Concert going light colors. From here on, I will show results which demonstrate statistically significant differences between the responses of the young and the older ones. So for the music events, in music events attended, the greatest differences are in going to music clubs. Whereas around 40% of young people did this at least six times per year, three quarters of the older people never did this at all. Brass music concerts, Austrian folk concerts and rock concerts also showed significant differences. Little differences between the age groups was for classical concerts, operas, choral performances, jazz concerts, and musicals. We have found big differences between young and elder ones as regards what people want to get from their music. Also, the aged over 25 do also like much, do also like music that makes them feel good, only one third of them rates this as very important, compared to almost two thirds of younger people. Responses were similar for music to set the mood for parties and celebrations, for relaxing and so on. Only the question of listening to music for cultural sophistication is just as unimportant for young people as it is for older ones. Music in everyday life, for both young and old, music's role in everyday life is strongly shaped by mobile music players. 74 of young people and 56%, 74% of young people and 56% of older people say that they really like listening to music on the move. That's in the car, on the train, or bus, and so on. We can see big differences in listening to music during sports, evening out, and being with friends. Neither young nor old particularly enjoy listening to music while eating or working. <coughs> when we take a closer look at how much money the Austrians spend on music, we can see significant differences in spending on music streaming and music downloads. But it's particularly striking to see how few, even among young people, are prepared to pay for downloading or streaming music. It's 32% and 21% respectively. Spending money for concert is very popular for young and old alike. As you see in the left hand side. So once again, the typology I just showed before. The music business research classification of Austria as a less developing streaming market is confirmed by the responses of the consumers <coughs> or non-consumers. Now for the preferences. Thanks to Pierre Bourdieu, music preferences and tastes have gained great prominence in music research. In Austria, certain music styles polarize, while others enjoy a wide audience. Along with level of education, age is also very influential here. Answers to our open question about people's favorite music show that electronic dance music and hip hop are specifically younger tastes. By contrast, classical music Austrian folk music and Schlager music are significantly <coughs> less popular with young people than with older ones. I think I have to explain Schlager music. That's a phenomenon particular to the German-speaking countries, Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. Um, fans of this type of music are very loyal and um, are ready to spend quite much money for buying CDs. 
it's uh, a kind of making music with traditional instruments like uh, harmonica and brass instrument and very rooted in the history of the uh, organ and German music history. The red bar at the very bottom here shows strong denial for heavy metal music. This style is polarizing young people more than elder ones. So why is that? Because as we think that's uh, because if you ask people which music don't you like at all, heavy metal music don't, don't, just doesn't come to mind for elder people because in their everyday life it's it doesn't play a big role. So for younger ones, heavy metal is something that they have on the screen every day. And if they don't like and they are asked, it comes to them out. So heavy metal is the only music style where we have significant differences in uh, denial. As we have many differences in um, Liking of music, there are not so many differences in denial of music styles. Another way of finding out how popular different music styles are is asking people how often they listen to music. Compared to the questions for preferences, the generation gap is even larger here for hip hop and electronic dance. And we can see statistically high significant differences between the under 25ers and older ones. The difference for Austrian folk music and classical music are less marked here. Apparently, day to day life in Austria results in younger people also hearing these music styles more often than they would consciously choose to. So for the next chart, the green bars here represent not that aged over 25, <coughs> but the parents of that uh, aged up to 25. If you want to know about how parents' music tastes influence their children, we need to ask people about what music they listened to in their youth. We asked our interviewees to think back to what music they most liked to listen to when they were 14 years young. We then ask them to recall the music that their parents preferred at that time. The results are extremely interesting with Schlager music enjoying great popularity also by the younger ones. At the same time, the age groups differed less for hip hop and electronic dance than for world music, Austrian folk music and classical music. Of course, that's a dangerous way to ask people, remember when you were 14 years old, what was your favorite music? Okay, that works out fine maybe, but what was the favorite music of your parents? So, quite unsure this chart, but it gives first insights to what might be the, the influence of the parents' tastes to their children's tastes. Here back again for the comparison of the digital natives with them aged over 25. Here the music styles are arranged according to the differences between these two age groups. Obviously the strongest distinction area when they were 13, 14 years old was Austrian folk music for those aged 26 or older and world music for the digital natives. Again, highly interesting is the non-existing difference referring to Schlager music at the bottom. <coughs> we know why is that, because uh, here is not age the crucial criterion, but it's education. So it goes through the age groups, the denial for Schlager music or the love of Schlager music according to the taste of the parents. So parents' taste, uh, according to Schlager music, is given to their kids one-to-one. -one. On the other hand, um, if you ask the people who influenced your 
uh, taste for music. The parents have no big role in this question. You see here all but the internet bars in light colors because the differences are of no statistical significance. Responders didn't tend to identify their parents as the strongest influence on their music taste. Friends and the older forms of mass media as radio and TV remained the most influential. For the over 25ers, parents are in third spot. For the under 25ers, it's the internet. The internet is also the only influence showing a statistically significant difference between the age groups. This difference, however, is extremely marked. We had experienced, uh, we had expected something <coughs> like this, but until now there has nowhere been such clear scientific proof of the internet's formidable influence on digital natives' music tastes. The strongly contrasting attitudes to music on the internet are also reflected in responses regarding what devices people use to listen to music. Whereas the older people, the radio, whereas for the older people, the radio remains the undisputed champion, young people are turning to their smartphones. Here we can see in detail how the internet is used for music. Young and old alike generally have very little interest in actually buying music through the internet. However, we see great differences in how the age groups use the web 2.0 to listen to music, to get information and free downloads, and to use music as a basis for communication. And that, I think, is the most critical change in the last year music as something to start something other. Music as basis for communication, not music because I love music, but music as an issue I can get in connection with someone other and to start conversation and so on. Music is not less important. Music has an other importance in the last 20 years. So the changes over the five years between our two surveys show just how rapidly things are <coughs> developing. In 2010, in Austria, smartphones were still considered a luxur luxury item. And even young people related it as the least important type of music player. Today, most of the teenagers carry one of these online pocket computers everywhere they go. Within just five years, the smartphone has become the weapon of choice for listening to music among that of age up to 25. If we compare the, the blue bus, the phone, in 2010, 20% and 76% in 2015. That's a tremendous uh, race. So, I'm coming to the end to sum up our empirical survey. Yes, fine, fine. fine yes. Uh, our empirical survey shows one thing very clearly. The future of music listening in the digital era hangs on the internet and how people use it for information, for communication, and for receiving music. The extent to which this already applies to the digital natives allows us to surmise that what we are seeing here is more than just a group trend. However, experience shows that established music reception channels are not completely sidelined by new technology. In Western industrial countries, CDs are a well-rooted cultural technology and are likely to hold on for decades as a way of listening to music. It will be interesting to see if listening to music via older, slower, more awkward and more expensive media, such as CDs or even vinyl records, will continue to survive as a contrast to the more convenient ways of consuming music. 
Here I can see a parallel with eating out in restaurants, which, despite frozen pizzas and microwave meals, remains a favorite pastime for those who can afford it. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Could you put the topology graph back up again, please? Which one? The, the Which one? The, the, the world. The world. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you got past it. Back, 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 back. Yeah. Which one? The one about the world, how the world That's is divided. Yeah, yeah, the stream. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, stream. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I have a question to you. Why do you think Germany and Austria are, actually, I saw this yeah. before, are in the same sort of uh, part? Absolutely, because this is a chart where you can see the role of music streaming compared to the role of downloading of music. Here you see which uh, amount of uh, uh, streaming is uh, compared to the downloading. And as you see, Austria, Germany, UK, Japan are very near in this comparison. And if you look at China on the right top, you see that ad-supported um, streaming is in China very important. As in Sweden, you have uh, uh, the uh, flat rates. Yeah? You have to pay for your streaming, you have flat rates, and it's not as supported. And you see here, it's very different situation, but you have to see this is in 2014, and maybe it has developed le last year. I don't know, maybe someone of you has data of 2015 for the UK. Do you think um, broadband costs or you know, internet costs, etc., are already factored within yeah. within that. Um, it's whether the broadband cost, the, the cost of the affected. Maybe it's the broadband cost. Maybe it's the, uh, the maybe it's the situation of the smartphones in one country. So, as you know, in South Korea, in uh, the almost everyone only listens to the music about smartphones. Whereas uh, in the USA, the situation is quite different. There are many aspects who are playing into this situation. And it would be very different to pull out which uh, influence has uh, which uh, status in this situation. I, I, I suppose it is interesting that there isn't any, we can't intuitively yeah. say, um, which if we think about a country that isn't named there, we couldn't intuitively say where yeah. we would put it. It does seem to be to do with the very, very specific conditions in that country, which might be economic and technological. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it, it pre presents an almost chaotic <coughs> picture of the development <coughs> of this technology. Yeah. This is just one, one uh, perspective on this situation, just a perspective comparing the, 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 the importance of streaming w and the importance of downloading. Mm. That's the perspective of this chart, not mm. more and not less. I have a question because you, um, you won again of, of, of these charts. Uh, there was this question who influ influences yeah. your taste mm. and uh, uh, internet was yeah. included yeah. there and this was the yeah. main difference between the digital, digital natives and the older mm -hmm. generation. But you know, internet is a very wide uh, concept. Yeah. Did, you look, did you look at more detail what in, in the internet actually affects yeah. people? Yeah, it's absolutely the, 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 the streaming platform YouTube. That's it. Right. Yeah. So YouTube is the first gate for young people mm -hmm. to get in connection with music. So if you have a conversation about a new band, a new music act, uh, and uh, you hear a name for the first time and you want to get information, you put out your smartphone, go to YouTube, put in the name, and that's your first contact with this music. Mm -hmm. And YouTube has uh, some issues 
that uh, meet the demands of young people. You can comment there, you can rate there, uh, you can see how many people have uh, watched to this before. This is all very useful information for the younger generation. They are not just going to the record shop, hoping <coughs> to get the new Beatles record there, buying it with spared money, going home, smelling it, putting out, reading the lyrics, putting on the uh, on the yeah. on the table and listening to it for one hour, concentrated, and telling next one in school his friends and being the hero for one week. That's over. That's your question. Your research in Austria mm -hmm. talks about young people and the future of the, yeah. the consumption of music, and it's going to be digital, it's through the mm -hmm. internet. Um, what do you think the implications are for musicians and artists yeah. with that? Um, yeah. Like later on today, we'll we've got different yeah. workshops yeah. that are going to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. Uh, people within the industry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, musicians, yeah. etc. Yeah. And they're going to be talking, yeah, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see their perspective. Mm -hmm. But from an academic perspective, yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think the implications are? It has become quite uh, difficult for musicians. So they, they cannot allow to deny their connection to internet. They have to have a website. They have to have a Fastpoint account. So they have to put... Uh, their uh, time and their money and their effort. Uh, effort. Effort. Uh, effort into channels which weren't uh, existent 20 years ago and this effort uh, should go into making music in my opinion but there is no chance to make music outside of the internet as you are very prominent you can say, okay, my music will not be streamed on Spotify, but to, to have an impact with this, uh, you have to be a star. If I say my music uh, will not be on Spotify or on YouTube, nobody cares about it. So the problem is you have to play, uh, you have to get informed and you have to get um, competence in playing new, new kinds of you to play new streams, media streams, and you have to think about how people will listen to music. Many young people will listen to music via smartphones and cheap airplugs. You have on the one hand, middle-aged, mostly men, with very expensive music devices at home, and uh, they play their vinyl records, digitally remastered, 180 gram vinyl, and with a good glass of red wine. On the, and on the other hand, you have the young people uh, in the tube listening from their smartphone with cheap airplugs. So you have to think of different kinds of audiences. You have to ask yourself who whom do I want to listen to my music? And that's a reason why you cannot only make music, put it out and hope that some of them go and buy it. Mm. I, I worry for the future that, because the music industry, like musicians talk about, they're not, they, they can't make it a living, they, can't, they don't yeah. generate enough yeah. revenue yeah. Yeah. To, to, for a professional living out yeah. because of the yeah. internet yeah. age. And you know, lots of musicians talk about they can't be full-time yeah. musicians. They're, they're you know they've got day jobs basically. Yeah. So I wonder if that's going to be if that pattern is a general yeah. pattern. Yeah. It's going to it could affect. Yeah. It could be you know the the decline of the music industry because people don't have time to dedicate. Mm -hmm. It's basically making music is becoming yeah. a hobby, yeah. and that surely would affect yeah. the quality of music production. Yeah. And, and quality in the future. Yeah. According to that, we have two opinions. The one opinion says, okay, that's true, many of the musicians will never get any money off their music, out of their music, but these mu this musicians <coughs> did not in the analog era, because 99% of the people who wanted to get a recording contract were denied. Today, everyone can put his music on the internet. 
there is no barrier for this. So the 99 unsuccessful musicians today claiming about not being uh, successful were just not visible for us in the past. Right? That's the one opinion. The other opinion is uh, that it has really become uh, harder to get su success out of music also for professional musicians that wanted to put everything they have into the music. We don't know how it will come up. Today I see many of my friends make music and more than ever put their efforts in making music because they say, uh, okay, I know I will never get any money out of it, but I make it not for them, or I make it not for money, but I make it for me. It's not because I want, it's because I must. And that's, that hasn't changed. The, this, this uh, musicians that must make music because they cannot sleep if it, they don't make music, will that do? If they get money or whatever. And you can try to um, give more concerts and sell your records, your CDs, or your T-shirts and concerts. We all know how, m how few money you get out of streaming. If you sell 10 T-shirts after a concert, you get more money out of it as you have one million streams at Spotify. So you have to find other ways to get income from your music indirectly. I think this was also something which was discussed yesterday at length, yeah. but something which interest, interests me, but it's, it's kind of, uh, may, maybe you, you didn't look at it at your, at, in your research and maybe it's very difficult to um, find out, but from my own experience as a mother of 30 years old boy, uh, I noticed that his listening patterns are not only different in these respects you presented, I mean he's very much in this Mm -hmm. you know, under 25, for example, he doesn't have any CD, mm -hmm. all his knowledge about music is from YouTube. Yeah. But also there is something different about him in, 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 in comparison to my generation, a uh, younger generation than mine. Mm -hmm. He seems to have no loyalty towards music. So somehow, you know, I remember that I followed the stars, yeah. I wanted yeah. to learn about yeah. him, he just listening to song and that's mm -hmm. it. And he, I mean, s Maybe exaggerate mm -hmm. uh, a, a bit. He has some interest in music, but but certainly it's kind of more flimsy. And I wonder if you detected this also yeah. in your yeah. in your uh, uh, yeah. questionnaire. Yeah, um, yeah. That's just because today we have much more uh, possibilities to have. Uh, uh, today we have just uh, many more uh, possibilities to have um, experiences for young people. In the 80s we didn't have much. We had In Austria we had two TV uh, channels uh -huh. and we had four radio channels and uh, there was a record shop in the next big city and that was it. And uh, you, you had the possibility to, uh, to, to get copied a record on tape of your friends and it was a great experience to hear music that was rare. But in, a, in an age where um, the, the possibilities are without borders and you have the, the possibility to not only hear uh, actor music but from the 30s mm -hmm. and from every corner of the world, you can get music with two clicks. If it is not hard to get anything, it uh, maybe it loses, loses its own value. value. Okay. That may be one reason of that. First, you can have more experience outside of music, and second, you can everything uh, get very easily. So maybe that loses some value. Okay. Any more questions? So what do you think will be the future after streaming? This is the big question. So now we can say the, the future will be streaming for some time. Yeah, so listening for streaming, do you I think I there will no be? I have no idea. Nobody couldn't, could imagine that streaming would get uh, such a big role in the music industry and uh, for many times the recording industry tried 
to uh, ignore streaming or to think uh, uh, streaming is just a, 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 an affair that will go on for five years and then be over. And everyone thought, okay, legal downloading, that will be, that will save us. No one can say. If I could say this, I would be wealthy today. No one can. And maybe there will come new artists that will find new kinds of music experiences that uh, revolutionize the industry. We don't know. I have no idea. As I said before, we cannot say what the future of music will be, but I'm sure that the Internet will absolutely play a big role in this game, in the future. Which role exactly, I cannot say. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I was struck by what you said about uh, the metaphor about Restaurant. people still going to restaurants yeah. when they can buy a frozen pizza yeah. and eat it at home. Um, I, I was, the very word streaming makes you think of water and w music is available yeah. at the turn of a tap like mm -hmm. water is available at the turn of the tap. But I look on your lectern and you have, there are two expensive bottled, uh, uh, yeah. bottles of water. Yeah. Uh, and it seems as though as we now have free water on tap, there's an ever increasing market for water that might, um, you, that we might spend a lot of money on. I, I, I was in a, a restaurant uh, a year ago in London of course and uh, their bottled water was eight pound yeah. now I'm sure it was very very good yeah. but I guess the, <laughs> I guess there's the, there's there's a sense that even if something's free mm. if something is free there may be very good um, reasons of um, self-esteem or status yeah. or perceived quality why we might pay for something that yeah. would otherwise be available to us free. Yeah. Just also adding, uh, we were talking yesterday that music is somehow at the forefront of social changes and I think here we can see the parallel between the situation of musicians and, and situation of the academics unless you know it. So for example, we are very much encouraged to market ourselves yeah. I remember when I entered that academia, you know, that the main point was to somehow, you know, teach and research. You weren't bothered about really how it will be dissem disseminated, how many people will read it. The, the main point was to somehow publish a book. And now the mes message we, we get, if you don't make this book, you know, available widely, or if this book wouldn't really affect life outside academia, what is known as impact, really don't bother to write it. It, it, it's probably worth noting that the whole of these proceedings are being filmed and will be available to be streamed on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, yeah. Just one like question related to the streaming revenue, really, and I don't know if you can answer this, but why is there such a difference between royalty payments to do with stream mm -hmm. and radio and TV? I mean, you know, I, don't, I don't know whether, I mean, is this anything you have any information on or? Um, I don't know. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, it's all right. I, no. you know, I just wondered whether we don't know research, about this. You know. We didn't ask him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think. But, uh, just uh -huh. I, I wanted to say we 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 may not forget me uh, me. I also I'm a collector of vinyl records. Yeah, I have a few thousand records at home, but on the train in the play. I also listen to music via my smartphone, so yeah. it depends on the situation. The future of music will be more depending on situations. In earlier times we had to concentrate on doing things and then one after another. And today maybe it is more for multitasking. Watching uh, TV uh, listening to music in the background, checking the fast point of Facebook account and so on. So music will become a part of our life. It will be more music in our life, but maybe not uh, only the music we absolutely want and need, but more kinds of music. It's because like music as water. This metaphor yeah. was used, yeah. I think, in one of... One of it's uh, a one stream of music. of music that surrounds us and mm -hmm. someone will pick some of this 
and we, 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 we heard the ghetto, it developed from a push market to a pull market. Yeah. And maybe that's an important uh, innovation. And just to finish, also, you know, uh, art never disappears, or practically never disappears. There's also <coughs> a sort of residue of, of old dominant forms of, ma uh, yeah. of art in existence. Look at opera. This was a, this was once the dominant, uh, you know, cultural form, and it was expected that opera will die. But actually, it reached some stage when it's not a dominant form. But you can say that opera is relatively yeah. doing well. So this can be also true about, you know, certain types of music. Maybe also one result of these changes will be that some kind of some some types or some genres of popular music will be upgraded to the status of classical music and musicians engage in this type of music they will for example receive you know uh, uh, grants to develop it because yeah. it will be recognized that they cannot really live off the uh, of the market yeah. Yeah. this might be also one result of that we just don't know yet yeah. maybe maybe uh, a future uh, way of uh, earning money with music is to finding a way to share a following for you and uh, give them the possibility to share experience, music experience with you on special places, in special times. And this is the only possibility to get this experience. Yeah. An experience you cannot reproduce over the internet. Maybe that is, uh, is an answer for the overwhelming possibilities to or the o overwhelming offers of music in the internet. Still one question. Yeah, Do you, I mean, looking at the revenue streams of music going forward, I mean, and two elements on why streaming maybe isn't as popular, it's looking at the configuration of it and actual the hassle and getting the type of music you want to listen to. So maybe when that matures and it's the algorithms predicting what type of music you're into will sophisticate a bit more, yeah. may change. But also, yeah. from a revenue perspective, that information that people are gleaning about you, because music is so influential, culture and everything else, will possibly be the revenue source yeah. which actually drives the stream and moving yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, I have no information on this, but I know it is possible to get this information, but I'm not sure who holds his hand on this. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult to get some good information of these revenue streams, you get the official information of the IFB, but you know about this, it's the official opinion and nobody knows how true it is. I think we should finish it now. Thank you very much. <laughs>